Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing you God's truth today. Now, are you ready to make your demands? Say this with me. Say, Father, today I demand, give me today my daily bread. I receive it right now. I receive it from heaven. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen. Man, praise God. Receive a miracle today where it concerns your needs. Receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Something special is coming your way today. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we'll give you praise. Today is another day and we are so excited because your spirit will guide us into all truth. Thank you for your loving kindness, Lord. And burdens are being lifted right now. Yokes are being destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command sickness to leave your body right now. Be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The problem with the ear. I see someone, you're having a problem with your right ear. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus. I command it to lose now. Be opened now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Whatever is blocking that ear, I command it to open right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Oh, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Now, whenever you're watching this broadcast, have expectations in your hearts. Don't just listen. look at somebody that's just preaching. The Spirit of God is doing a lot of things. So sometimes we say it, sometimes we don't say it, not because it's not happening. It's because if we, if we go in that direction, we would miss... Um, see, the Word of God is just a complete package. I'm telling you the truth. So take it. If it's healing you need, as you're listening, be expectant and healing will come to you. If it's a miracle you need, as you're listening, be expectant. The Holy Spirit will give you a word that will bring forth that miracle. That's how it works. Praise God. All right. Now, I was telling you something yesterday. I was trying to explain to you how God has already done everything he needs to do. So if you find yourself in any kind of difficulty today, it's not because God's hands are shut. No. So I was using the tie to explain something to you. So I said, God gave them the command concerning tithe. I was connecting it with even in the Garden of Eden when God started giving command, don't eat of this tree until I tell you how and what, when to eat it. So the same thing he gave concerning the tithe. See, he told them, look, the tithe belongs to God. And what is the tithe? It is 10%. Listen, you know, I hear people say, look, um, what is 10%? God has saved you. You're giving him only 10%. You know, see, <laughs> Solomon said, don't be over-righteous because you will, just, you will just destroy yourself. He said, don't be over-righteous. Yes, God owns everything we have. Yes, but there is a reason he said one tenth. If you don't understand that reason first, then you have a problem. You will, if you don't understand. Understand God, follow him. Don't, don't, don't think you know better than him. When he said 10%, there's a reason he said 10%. There's a reason he told Abraham one tenth. How did Abraham know about the tithe? It's not something Abraham gave freely. You know, people just feel Abraham met Melchizedek and then he now gave him the tithe. No, no. Melchizedek demanded the tithe from Abraham. Yes. It was when Abraham met Melchizedek that Melchizedek taught him consigning the tithe. 
He says, Abraham, this is what you are going to be doing from now. So it was a covenant between Abraham and God. That now when Abraham finished receiving the teachings from Melchizedek, Abraham obeyed by giving him the tithe of all that was with him. One tenth. He didn't ask for everything. He just said, give me one tenth. Now what do you think Melchizedek did with it? Carry it and go to heaven? No. <laughs> no. He told Abraham what to do with it. Now that's another day's talk. Now, so you find out that tithe, the, the, the teaching of tithing came from God, came from the Spirit of God himself. And he said one tenth. He could have said, give me everything. But he said one tenth. Then you go into the, 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 the law and then the teachings of Moses, the instructions Moses gave to them. Moses, you begin to find Moses gave them different instructions how, concerning how to give the tithe. Now, in all those instructions, it sums up to one thing. You must go before the Lord and receive instructions on what to do with every tithe you get. Yes, that's the right thing to do. Now, now, for example, Moses told them, look, the heave, the, the tithe of the heave um, harvest or something like that, it's for the uh, Levites. So he said the Levites will come and take that particular tithe. Then there's also the tithe that Moses told them that you, you will, when you take it, you will not you will eat it, but you will not eat it in your house. He said, you must take the tithe and take your family, your household, to the place where God will command. And when you get there, you will sit down there and celebrate, have a celebration and eat that tithe. God gave them that instruction. And then there's the one God said, look, for the, they had the year of titan every three years every third year is a year of titan now for that year he gave them instructions that you gather all the tithe and keep it at your gates you know let's keep it outside your house and when you keep it there he says the widows the orphans the the strangers will come and take to their food so you just keep it there and, and, and maybe someone will watch over it and then that that's what i tell you the, the donkey that Jesus rode on into Jerusalem was someone's tithes. Praise God. Now, here's the point. Today, we have been given the Holy Spirit. And it is the Holy Spirit that guides us into all truth. It's the Holy Spirit that leads us. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So, now think about this. You received some money and then you take out the tithe which is the 10 percent it's 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 god just obey that one first you take out the tithe and then you go before the lord who is alive who speaks and who hears you go before him and said father you have blessed me and as a mark of honor and i've told you this it must be the first thing because if you want to honor god then honor him he's not after the money he's after the honor so it must be the first thing you take out of that money the first spending you do out of that money must be your tithe so you take it out and then you say father i want to honor you and i bless you lord for this thank you lord what would you have me do with this? And he will tell you. Now, here's the point. Now, I've had, had this. It's, it's, it's a frequent occurrence in our lives. Situations where we'll ask the Lord and he'll tell us, this is what I want you to do. I want you to give it to so and so. I want you to send it to so and so. I want you to use, use it for this. He'll tell us. Now, when we obey the Lord, hey, guess what? It goes down. Now, just think about this. Someone is trusting God for a hundred thousand naira to pay his rent or to pay his fees or to, to take charge of something very important. And the person cried out to the Lord, Lord, I, I need a hundred thousand. 
I receive it in the name of Jesus. Now, here you are with 100,000. God has blessed you with a million, for example. And then here you are with 100,000. And you lift it up to God and say, Lord, here is your tithe. I'm waiting for instructions. And then the Lord said, take it to Susan so person and give it to the person. Okay. Okay, Lord, I will. And then you obey the Lord. And then you go give it to that person. And said, the Lord asked me to come give you this. Oh, thank you. Guess what? Ah, wow. <laughs> Praise God. Wow. Now, now, now. Now, this should be what's happening. We're talking about things concerning salvation. This should be what is happening around every believer. But the giving and the receiving. Why am I using tithe? Because that is your father's money on the earth. It is not tithing. Yes, we give it freely and joyfully but the tithe itself is not a free will giving it's a command why did god command us to give it not because he wants to make one you know the the church organization rich no it's because he wants to make his children rich that this is how it works that's how it works I'll never forget, you know, recently, you know, you know, someone, someone I know, of course, had approached me. I like, look, Pastor, I need some money to um, pay off my school fees because uh, they just logged, uh, you know, of the school portal. And as at the time the person asked me for that money, I, I, I really didn't have that kind of money. So I said, well, I don't have it yet right now, but let's just pray and see what the Lord will do. So we prayed and, and trusted God. Now, five minutes after that, I just received an alert on my phone. Now, the money that came in to my phone was just 1,000 Naira above what that person needed for the school fee. And I saw that the, this is the person wrote tight. So the moment I saw it, of course, it just hit my spirit. You know who this money is for. I said, yes, sir. So I sent the money to the person. The fees was paid. Now, how do you explain that? Someone has asked the Lord. And here's another person with the tithe. And the Lord spoke to, now I was the connector. <laughs> you see, so God, God who knows. Now, this person asked me. As at the material time, the person was asking me, I didn't have that kind of money. But there is someone else that the Lord has commanded to send that money to me. So this person will get it. And because he trusts me that I'm not going to see that money and say, whoa, and start thinking of all the things I want to do with it. But so he brought this request first. And then when the tithe came in, I knew exactly where it was going. Now the giver is blessed. The receiver is blessed. And then the channel is blessed, praise God. Yeah, that's how it works. Now think about how many people God have commanded like this, but religion will not allow them to accept that truth. Now, I'm not saying you just wake up and say, ah, you know, you know, some people are just rebellious in their spirit. You shouldn't be rebellious. I'm not saying you say, ah, hey, now I know all the pastors are eating our money. I'm not giving my money to church. Like, no, that's not what I'm telling you. Because God can command you to give it to your church or to any church. He can. What, so I'm not saying stop giving your time. No, what I'm telling you is this. Take it to the owner. The owner knows why he blessed you at that time. Trust me, when we begin to function like this, you know what's going to happen? We are going to open the windows of heaven. There is going to be so much abundance, not just for you, for everyone. Hey, guess what? We'll all begin to rise and, and rise, getting our needs met, testimonies coming from here, testimonies coming from there. The one who gave is giving into a testimony. The one who's receiving is receiving into a testimony. That is how, that is what stirs up joy in our hearts. 
You find out as God's children, we are no longer going to beg. No one's going to, please, can I, can I? No, 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 no. Why you say, Father, I receive my daily bread. Someone else is receiving instructions concerning you. Send, send that tithe to this person. Send that tithe to this person. Hear me. One tenth, which is 10% alone. Trust me, trust me, trust me. It's enough to fund God's activity on the earth if we all give it right. My time is up today. <laughs> Praise God. Now, do you understand what I'm saying? It is because he wants to reach all his children. That's why he set up the Titan structure. Let's follow it and see his blessing. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.